morning, welcome to day 16 of Vlogmas. So it's Friday today, hooray, nearly the weekend, um, and it's about 9.30 in the morning right now. But I feel like I've been up for absolutely hours. <laughs> we had a really early start this morning. My son had an early morning medical appointment, so we had to get up extra early and leave the house about just past seven for that, which is much earlier than usual for us. It was still very dark outside on the way, although it was quite nice actually, because as we were driving, the sun was starting to rise, which looked really, really pretty, um, yeah, as we were driving along. But yeah, it was really early. I wasn't very keen on driving on the roads at that time because the temperatures was, I think the car, someone would have said minus seven. So it was very cold. Um, I was a bit worried about ice, but actually the journey was absolutely fine. So we had the medical appointment. My daughter came along too because it was so early. It just made more sense. I then drove them back around to the school, dropped them off there, then realised I'd forgotten something my daughter needed. So I drove back home, then walked up to the school, dropped that off, walked back home again. Got quite cold on the walk because it really is very cold today. But <laughs> I'm finally back home now. Um, and in a moment, once I've chatted to you guys, I'm going to go and make myself a cup of tea because I feel like I could really do with one this morning. So but that's been a busy morning so far. So it's nice to be back in the warmth now. So I thought I'd pop on and share what Elf is up to in the night and what I'm wearing and a few other bits too. So yeah, I'll start off as usual with what Elf was up to in the night and he um, ransacked our DVD cabinet overnight and created a little sort of set of stairs leading up to the poof that I made. Um, I'll pop a picture up so you can see. Um, you can see the little staircase he set up and he's sitting on top of the poof. Um, I made that poof using the Closet Core poof pattern which is a free pattern you can download on the closet core website and it's one i really like and it's designed to be made out of little scraps to create a sort of pizza sort of wedge shape on top and down the sides but as you can see the version in the picture is not like that i kind of scaled the poof down to make it smaller and just went for one simple circle on the top and one piece of fabric around the side and it, i guess it's quite a mini poof and i use it just as a footstool in our living room and it takes up a bit less space than our other poofs which are a bit larger <laughs> um so yeah that is where elf we found elf and um it was taken a while building his little staircase and the film he had at the top that had made a little bridge for him to get onto the poof was obviously Elf. Um, so you can see there him with Elf. He's got the DVD remote in his hand, although as my daughter pointed out, he was facing in the opposite direction from the TV. So she thought he might need a bit of help if he actually wants to watch it, um, that film. So that was what Elf was up to. So yeah, not too messy this morning. It shouldn't be too tricky for me to tidy up, which is nice. Um, it was quite nice actually to see all our films. I'd forgotten we had a couple of those. So thank you Elf for that. Um, so yeah, that was what Elf was up to. Then in terms of what I'm wearing, well, I pretty much just grabbed something easy and quick this morning because I was still feeling a bit half asleep when I got dressed. So I've got on a pair of ready to wear jeans and a handmade sweatshirt. And actually I've got a handmade t-shirt underneath as well. Um, so yeah, the sweatshirt is this pattern here. The Jarrah sweatshirt pattern by Megan Nielsen, one of my favorites. And I've just got on this top version here today, this kind of relaxed fit, drop shoulder sweatshirt, um, with this crew neckline which I've just made in the fabric itself and I've used the fabric for the the cuffs and the bottom band too so it's got the cuffs and the bottom band and quite a relaxed fit it's just really comfy to wear this one and I thought um because we were going to medical appointment in the hospital I know it can often be really warm in the hospital so I didn't want to wear something I wouldn't be able to pull off easily if I got a bit warm so this worked well and this version I made in a really lovely fleecy back sweatshirt fabric I think I got it quite a while ago from fabric godmother um, and I know um, quite a few online fabric shops had this fabric in quite a few colourways at one point. I don't know whether it's still available online. I'll have a look online and link it if I can find it anywhere down below. But it's a really nice fleecy fabric, actually. On the outside, it almost feels a bit velvety to touch. It's really got a really lovely feel to it. And it's nice and fleecy on the inside. I'll show you. Um, See, so yeah, it's quite a nice cosy one. I like the colour. I don't often wear this kind of orangey rust colour but I thought it was quite cool with these black spots on so I enjoy wearing this one and I think my only adjustment I made was for this pattern I think I made the size zero um based on my bust measurement because it is quite oversized um the waist and hips are slightly smaller but there's loads of room in it as you can see um and I think I just lengthened the sleeve slightly and lengthened the body slightly on it but this one's actually still a bit cropped I'll put a picture up so you can see um because it is the Jarrah Jar I do think is quite a cropped sweatshirt, so I think I might have just lengthened this one by an inch or so, so it's still got a little bit of a boxy cropped look to it, but 
but it's nice and comfy and cozy to wear and nice and relaxed too and actually this afternoon my children um, have a carol concert at school we're going along to which is really nice um last year they did it outside um, i think because of everyone's being extra cautious with covid so it was best to be outdoors for it this year they were planning to do it outside again but the temperatures are so cool, cold at the moment the school's decided instead to have it in the hall um, which makes much more sense because it's yeah it'll be a long time standing getting cold standing still for the children and us outside so it'll be nice in the hall but it does get very hot in the school hall so again it's nice this jumper will work well this afternoon too because I might get quite hot and need to take it off um in the hall but yeah, underneath I've got a handmade t-shirt on I'll just pull my top up a little bit so you can see um it's just a very simple t-shirt I made quite recently using some just plain blue um cotton jersey and I made it using the Tilly and the Buttons Agnes pattern. Um, I just basically, the Agnes pattern is quite a nice fitted sort of um, jersey top pattern. And I just basically cropped the sleeves off on, off on it to turn it into more of a t-shirt. It's got a nice scoop neck. So even though the neckband of the Jarrah is quite wide, you can't see too much of the t-shirt because it's kind of got more of a wide scoop neck. So that works quite well underneath this sweatshirt. So that is what I'm wearing today. So while I'm on now, I just wanted to share a couple of other things. Um, the first thing I wanted to share was a little update on the knitting I did last night. I mentioned yesterday I was hoping to get a bit of knitting in. And I did manage a little bit, but not a great deal actually. So here's the knitting I did last night. It is starting the front of the dress I'm making for my daughter's doll for Christmas. So yeah, I didn't get that far really. So I'm hoping to do a bit more over the weekend. I really need to yeah, get my skates on in this one to get it done before Christmas, um, but I'm sure I will. So yeah, I just did this little bit of the front and I love with this lacy pattern how this the row at the bottom or these rows at the bottom in the white starts off straight. But then once you start adding the lacy pattern up above, it's turned it into a wiggly line, which I think is so clever. I love how knitting, how just a series of knots can come together and make such clever little patterns. So that is what I did last night, not a great deal. Um, I thought I'd show you how much of the white will I have left. This is the amount I have left, so really not much. And um, I still need, this is the back of the dress, I still need enough white to do these lines here and this waistband. So it's going to be touch and go, I think, as to whether I've got enough. I'm really not sure if there's going to be enough, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I'm going to power on with it and see how I get on. So yeah, I was glad to make a teeny bit of progress on that. At least I've got it sort of cast on and I'm getting going on the back now. So um, yeah, hopefully I'll be able to motor through that now because once you get into the rhythm of the lace stitch, I find it kind of, yeah, goes along quite fast. So I did that. I also thought I'd share um, this morning, we got to the um, hospital a little bit early. So we had enough time to read a little bit from a book. I took the book along with us that we're reading at the moment. Um, and I thought I'd share the book with you because I'm really, really enjoying it. It's a nice Christmassy one. So every year before Christmas and then run up to Christmas, and my husband and I try to sort of read um, at least one really Christmassy book to my children, just generally before bed or if we have a quiet moment in the day and they could do with a bit of downtime and just listening to us reading. So I thought I'd share a few of our favourites. Um, in the past, we've really enjoyed and we often reread actually at Christmas time. Firstly, 101 Dalmatians by Dodie Smith, which I love. Um, my mum used to read it to me and my sister when we were younger too. So it's got lots of memories, that book. So it's one we all really enjoy revisiting. And then um, a couple of years ago, we've got a book we also really love that was newer to, and I'd not come across it before. And it's a newer book. I don't think it's really, really new, but it was new to us. And that was called A Boy Called Christmas by Matt Haig. And we loved it. It was such a lovely tale. It's actually one that I'd happily read on my own at bedtime without the children being there anyway, because I think it's a really lovely story, even though it's designed for children. I think it's great for adults too. And then this year, I bought the sequel for um, the Matt Haig, A Boy Called Christmas book, which is this book here. And this is one we're reading at the moment. And it's called The Girl Who Saved Christmas. So quite a long way through, as you can see. And we're really, really enjoying it as well. It's a great sequel to the first one. I obviously don't know how it's going to end, but it's been a lovely tale so far. So yeah, if you fancy a nice Christmassy book, I'd really recommend all of those three. We really like them a lot. Um, yeah, so I thought I'd just share that as another Christmassy item. So yeah, I think my plans now are to definitely go and make myself a cup of tea. And then I'm hopefully going to do a little bit of sewing and work on my larger dressing gown a little bit more. I'd quite like to get it to the point today where I can try it on and check the fits. I think the next steps are to get the belt loops sewn up and check where I want to pop those on the sides and then sew up the side seams. So it'll be nice to sort of start to see it turning into dressing gown. So I'm hoping to go and do a bit of that now. So yeah, I think I'll finish here now, go and get my sewing machine out, do a bit of sewing and I'll catch up with you a little bit later. So see you in a little bit. Bye. Hello 
the kettle has just boiled my cup of tea and I thought I'd pop on and share with you a gadget I really enjoy using to make my tea at the moment. Um, so I really like green tea and I decided to try brewing loose leaf green tea rather than getting the um, tea bags just for a bit of a change. So I decided to have a little look online and find myself a tea strainer and I came across this really cute one I really enjoy using. So here it is, it's a bit different to average tea strainer. It's got this sort of classic stainless steel bottom with little holes the tea leaves to infuse through. But then on top it's got this silicon top here so you can just pop it on, put the tea leaves in here and pop it on like this. And then you dip it in the mug, pour the tea, the hot water soy on, and then give it a swish around like this and then you can take it out. And it works really well actually and it's quite nice with the silicon top. It's really easy to clean. I like the fact that you can kind of just hold on to the top and it's kind of, yeah, wobble it around a bit <laughs> to brew the tea. So I thought I'd share that. Um, yeah, just I thought it was quite cute and I'm really enjoying using it. So I've got my tea leaves here in this little pot, as you can see. And I just put about a teaspoon in here. And I don't usually infuse for very long because I like quite weak green tea. So yeah, this little gadget I just got from Amazon. I've got it on bookmarked on my Amazon favourites in case you think it's cute you'd like to give it a go too. But yeah, I'm just really enjoying using it. So I thought I'd share it, but I'll turn the camera around and show you, you um, a little video of it in action. So yeah, see you in a moment. <laughs> Um, it's bang on 12 o'clock now and I've managed to fit in a bit of sewing this morning which is really nice. I did end up popping out in the car to drop something at my mum's house um, so I didn't have quite as much sewing time as I was expecting but I have managed to make some good progress on my named larger dressing gown. So if you've been watching my previous episodes of Vlogmas you'll know that I'm making the named larger dressing gown for myself as a summer dressing gown and I'm using this really pretty viscose fabric from Minerva. It's one of their Minerva exclusive viscose chalets, which are really nice quality. And the one I'm using for my larger dressing gown is this really pretty tropical print with a sort of um, very light sort of beigey colour background. And it's got all these sort of um, yeah, tropical plants on with this cool sort of mosaic or tile effect, which I think is really pretty and a bit different. And I quite like the large scale print. I yeah, quite like that for a nice swishy summery dressing gown. So it's starting to look a lot more like the dressing gown now. You can see here is a sleeve. There's the little belt loop. I figured out where I wanted to put those. Um, and I've added on the collar too. And I remember just in time to add a hanging loop, which is always handier. Yeah, I would really, um, I really need that because I'm going to be popping that on my, on the hook on my bedroom door. So I'm glad I remembered to add in that. So there's my hanging loop. Um, I found the collar a little bit tricky to um, stitch in. So the way you attach it is you sort of sew the collar and the uh, main body of the fabric right sides together. And then you sort of turn in the collar um, and turn under a little um, little sort of seam allowance on the inside and then stitch in the ditch around the top. And I did find with this viscose fabric, even though I was using my walking foot, when I was stitching in the ditch, the fabrics were shifting slightly, I think because the collar is interfaced and the main fabric isn't interfaced. The collar was kind of holding its sort of place, whereas the main fabric might have been shifting slightly. So they did get a little bit out of sync as I was going around, but I've given it a nice good press now and it seems okay. So. Yeah, it seems to have gone in okay and it looks fine. So I'm pleased about that. So yeah, I, the reason I'm not wearing my jumper now is not because it, I'm actually very warm in here because it's actually still quite cold, but I thought I'd just pop this on so you can see how this is shaping up. So yeah, I need to put another layer on because it's quite chilly sitting here. Oh, and it means you can see my Agnes top as well, which is really comfy, a really nice basic. So yeah, I'll put the dressing gown on. Um, yeah, I'm pleased that's turning out. And I think I like the fit of it too, which is great. So here we are, it's got a nice wide collar. It's got nice, again, sort of relaxed wide sort of drop sleeve. Um, and yeah, it looks nice, I think. It's, yeah, fairly roomy, but I don't think it feels really, really roomy. Um, so I think it'll be good. I just need now to 
hem the sleeves, I think they're a little bit long. I added a bit of length to be on the safe side, but I think they're a little bit long, so I might turn those up and I might chop it off before I turn them up, I'm not sure. And I also need to hem the bottom. So it is, yeah, on the way to being finished, which is great. Um, I'm not gonna have a chance to do any more today, I don't think. I'm gonna tidy up my sewing stuff now and um, have a bit of lunch and then head out to the Carol concert at school. So I think I'll leave you now, go and get my lunch, and then I'll pop on a little bit later um, after the Carol concert. So yeah, I'll see you in a little bit, bye. Hello, actually I'm still here. Um, I've put my jumper on to get me cozy again, but I just realized there was one other thing I wanted to mention about the larger dressing gown, or it's kind of to ask you guys opinion actually, because as well as needing to hem the sleeves and the bottom, I also need to sew the belt. I haven't done that yet. I've cut out the pattern pieces for the belt. But in the pattern, it recommends you interface the belt pattern pieces before sewing them together. And I wasn't sure whether I wanted to do that or not because the collar, feeling the collar, um, it's, it's nice. It's not too firm, I think, around my neck. I think it gives a nice amount of stability to the front of the dressing gown. But I'm just not sure I want that much stability to the, the, the um, belt. I think if I did it up, it might end up sort of slipping loose a little bit with that extra bit of stiffness to it. So I was thinking about maybe just sewing it without any interfacing, but I wasn't sure if that would be, end up being too lightweight because the fabric is very lightweight and it would end up just scrunching up a little bit. So I just I guess I guess wanted to get your thoughts on whether you would interface the belt or not. I guess I could interface half of the belt, but then I think I'd have that problem where when I went to sew it, um, one of the sides would sort of ruck up a little bit more than the other one because one side would be interfaced and one side wouldn't and the viscose would sort of move about a bit. So it might kind of shift and end up with the belt not sort of sitting nice and flat when I tried to iron it. So... I'm just really not sure what to do on that one. So if you have any thoughts about what you do, I'd love to hear them. Or if you've made the larger dressing gown in the drapey fabric, um, I'd love to know if you did interface the belt and, and how it feels and if actually it's perfectly fine interfacing it. I'm just fussing over nothing. Um, yeah, do let me know, thank you. But anyway, I'm gonna make my lunch now and I'll see you again a little bit later. Bye. I'm back from the carol concert now. It was really, really lovely, really lovely to see them all singing. My son's class sang The Twelve Days of Christmas. My daughter's class sang It's a Wonderful World. Um, and yeah, all the children were just did so well. It felt really lovely and festive. So very enjoyable. Um, but yeah, I'm back now and I've got quite a quick turnaround because I need to go back up to school quite shortly and collect my daughter. Um, I'll be collecting my son a little bit later because he's got basketball after school. But yeah, I think we'll just, I'll just bring my daughter back and have a bit of a play at home because it's still very cold out there. So we've definitely been skipping the park this week. So I think I'll finish off this video here. Um, so I'll see you again tomorrow for day 17. We've got a really Christmassy fun morning plan tomorrow. So I'm looking forward to sharing a bit more of that with you. It's going to be a fun one, I think. So yeah, I will see you again for day 17 tomorrow. So thank you very much for joining me for another day. And yeah, hopefully see you tomorrow. Bye.